Latinos Out Loud podcast. Oh. Yo, 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 what's up, you guys? It's Rachel La Loca, Loca on location. We're here on Central Park South. Okay, I'll leave you with that. I'm in a place where the pancakes must be really good in the morning. Um, oh, I have such a special guest. This is such a special episode of Latinos Out Loud. You guys know my guest from shows like Sesame Street. Yeah, I said it. He played Mando. Ray Donovan. Yes, I did the accent. Oh, my God, I love that show so much. And also, now you can see him on Amazon Prime Video with Lord of the Rings, Rings of Power. It is none other than the multiple Critics' Choice Award winning Ismael Cruz Cordova. Hi. <laughs> it's so Hola. good to have Hola. you. Uepa, uepa. <laughs> I love intros. In case you haven't seen, I like to roll out the red carpet I'm and sorry. welcome you on in. I'm sorry I didn't bring cafecito with me, um, but you know, next time. I'll no, be... <laughs> I appreciate that. I... Oh, now that you mention it. It's magic. Well, you can get anything here on Central Park South, seriously. Um, it's so nice to see you, meet you, and be in your presence. Congratulations. Oh, thank you so much. I mean, congrats is what I want to say first. Thank you. Thank and then you. second, I need to ask, how are you? That's my first question. I'm good. I'm good. I mean, I'm, I'm grateful, excited, um, experiencing something a little bit surreal, you know, but I'm also excited. <laughs> so I know there's been like a press run for this. This mm -hmm. is season two, Amazon Prime. It came out on August 29th, in case you guys don't know. Check it out. Um, I want to talk about your season over season growth mm -hmm. and what's it like. And then I'd like to press rewind on your career at some point because there's so much to talk about. And I've heard you on other podcasts. This one's going to be better. But I'm just saying, <laughs> no, P to P, podcast to podcast, love. Um, but I have other questions for you that I know will inspire the Eloeleros, our hive. So tell us about season over season, some differences that you're seeing. And also, I have to say, you're playing the first elf of color in this Tolkien canon. So I want to know anything you've been receiving as a result of that. Well, season to season growth. I mean, in the first season, you see... Well, Firstly, very happy to be here. Aww. Eh, con los locos, eh? Los locos, <laughs> los locos de la loca. Somos locos, pero yo soy la loca, la, la única. <laughs> los locos de la loca. Uh, nice <laughs> to meet you all. Um, no, season to season, I, I don't do in the first season. Um, it's just this guy. I mean, I just call him just this guy. It's this elf. It's just, you know, a soldier tasked to, tasked, um, tasked with keeping the Southland safe and uh, look, uh, watching over the people of the Southlands, which were the people that uh, played allegiance to Morgoth or, you know, in, in, in before. So we've been there for almost 100 years, um, essentially colonized the place. So mm -hmm. my, my presence hasn't really landed well. But he's a guy that's super sensitive, very curious, um, has extreme it's an extreme curiosity for humans mm -hmm. and the way that they feel the way that they love the way that they move through life uh, these beings that have such a fleeting time on earth you know uh, in, in, in comparison to the lifespan of an elf so you're like if your life is so short like what gives you what gives you this much hope? These you know? poor elves, everything is so short. Their yeah. bodies, their lives, their oh. nose hairs. No, the humans, you know. Oh, well, the humans are shorter. Yeah. So how long, <laughs> how long does, what is the lifespan of your elf kind? My, oof, I mean, it, it varies, <laughs> but I'm, I'm possibly a thousand years old, oh. you know, between <laughs> five and five hundred and one thousand. Um, but yeah, there's like, there, there are beings that, that, that are, ancient you know in many ways so so you know you find him there he falls in love with a human uh, this forbidden love this uh, um, essentially just traverses middle earth and with that love like always at his for at the forefront um, mm -hmm. yeah and, and does essentially helps uh, save the Southlands uh, when we go to second season we find out that his love has died so we start with this um, grief, it's very deep grief. Um, but as we know, she has a son and I've made a promise to keep them all safe. I feel extremely guilty that I couldn't keep her safe. Um, 
but now I have her son. And he's always getting in trouble, and he gets in trouble immediately after our storyline starts. So I have to make that very quick pivot on what do I do? Do I rise to the challenge, or do I just ride solo? And he immediately, of course, like he puts his other people's needs in front of his own, traverses, saves uh, Isildur, saves Estrid, saves Theo, and keeps saving people down the line um, without much concern for himself you know he's at the service of this and, but he's driven by revenge in this season so you see a little bit more darkness yes. which I really like I really like the way you just painted all of that for us and that leads me to a question that I didn't really pre-plan but so you're handed scripts you know as an actor you're handed these PDFs right you just described something so much more layered than a PDF so that goes back to process mm -hmm. can you bring us in under the curtain, if you will, behind the curtain, about your process. How did you get all of that from your character that was handed to you in a script? Yeah, I mean, that's the thing. I think um, a lot of people don't understand uh, the, the work of the actor, you know, and that our actors are artists and that we, um, you know, we, we are, our artists are people that are questioning things, that are looking for things that are making connections. I mean, a lot of us are neurodivergent as well, so we look for a lot of connections and everything and patterns and whatnot. Um, and uh, for me, I just approach it in the way that I approach life, I guess. I'm always asking why. Somebody told me, one of my exes was like, your favorite question is why? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I've always been like that. Um, so it's just why, why, why? And just keep asking why, 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 until you get to the core of things. And you have to be compassionate, no matter what your character does. You have to be compassionate because, mm. uh, for the most part, people think that they're good, you know? So it's not your job to judge. Um, it's a job that can really increase and expand your empathy as well, if you allow it. Because, um, yeah, you're, you're looking for what happened to this. Like what happened? What's what, the backstory? Yeah, what happened? Where they come from? And, and like what made them like be this? like that? Yeah, yeah. So, so you're not like uh, you're not <laughs> judging that. You can't judge it. Otherwise, you won't have a good performance. Right. You won't at all. So, in my process, I just start that way, and you read it, and but also yeah, I endow it with, um, with what it means as well. Ooh. You know what it means. What my presence on camera means. What. What, um, what I would like to achieve in terms of that, um, what opportunities that I'm being given, what hasn't been seen, if there's other creatures or, like, or beings like myself, um, what is my contribution in that? Uh, how do, can I shape it from that aspect? And as you said, like I'm the first elf of color that is in, in this world and Afro Latino at that. So can I just say huepa? <laughs> can I give a big huepazo? <laughs> okay. Huepa. <laughs> Huepa, coño, ay Dios mío. Yeah, yeah. Pero felicidades. Okay, yeah, I'll contain her. Get back in there. No, no, get, no. It's, get, it's the moment get. to celebrate because it's like, that's the thing. It's, this is a space that has not been open to us. It's no. not been open for us. That, like, when I first saw Lord of the Rings when I was maybe 13 or something like that, it, it was unfathomable for the people that I shared. I was like, oh, I want to be an elf. You know, it was unfathomable for people. It was laughable, even. You've been wanting to be an elf for that long? You've, yeah. You, manif just, you like, elf manifested? Geez, it, it took 20, it took 20 years, but it manifested. Are you guys hearing this? Like, okay, you're just taking my, like, manifesting game to another level. I'm going to manifest that I'm going to become, a, like, a unicorn in real life. That's what I really want. <laughs> <laughs> but I just want to frolic with a horn on my head all day. <sighs> Um, and la loca will, like, I, I, if I see in the street, I, I wouldn't bat an eye. I was like, hey, how you doing? How you doing? Oh, nice, nice, nice horn. <laughs> For now, can I just get, like, a live podcast at the Apollo or something like that? You know, I'm going to, like, think small. But let's talk about this. You've been wanting to be an elf. Explícame eso. What is so elf rageous? that drew you to this elf world. And it's so crazy that you're in it. Oh, my gosh, yeah. you're in it. I mean, I'm, I was going to say, like, I manifested, <laughs> like, it, it wasn't, like, I wasn't thinking about manifestation, to be honest, because I still mm. don't quite understand how that works, but mm. I do know that 
you have to put your goals in, uh, at least for me in writing, there's something very beautiful about saying them concretely and putting them forward. You know, you have to put them forward. And one of my mentors, Candido Tigado, he's a playwright and a uh, New Yorkian playwright. I believe he's from the Bronx as well. I... And, do you know what kind of No, but I love uh, the Bronx and I yeah. love playwrights and New Yorkans. He's a homeboy and he was one of my mentors and he gave me one of my first opportunities at NYU, which I, I mean, I've been doing firsts and firsts and firsts and I was the first uh, Latino lead in a main stage at NYU. Amazing. Another program. huepaso. Yeah, I know. And, and Huepa. One of his things was like, <laughs> huepa. One of his things was <laughs> that in order to lead, to, to be seen as a lead, you have to lead. And he's mm. like, but we never get the opportunity to lead, so we don't know how to lead, like as as actors, and people don't don't see us leading. So there's no vocabulary, no imagine, like no in Spanish, ni el imaginario de mm. todo. That's not a thing that has been imagined because often we imagine through what we see, um, what we see represented. So he gave me that opportunity. But one of the things that he said, because I was I was making a very difficult decision at one time that I had. So I was hungry. I had no opportunities. I was living in a couch. It was like my third year of yeah. like being on a couch. And I called him. There was this job that I wasn't really loving, but it was going to be a paycheck. And I said, what do you think? And he said, you just have to write down um, your goals and the things that you want to achieve, but like write them down. And if you live by that and you reference that, you will never really experience regret in your decisions. Mm. He's like, if that is what you want to do, whatever strays from that, you'll still, you'll be okay for your decision. I'm going to write some stuff down real quick. Divorce to be final and the first loca on late night. Okay, that's my list right this is now. Like, that's a good title too. Loca la, on late, late night? Late night con la loca. I mean, or loca seriously. on late night. It's beautiful. Did you grow up watching Sabado Gigante? Absolutely. Of course, right? And I will be your Lilia <laughs> Stefan. <laughs> Yo, seriously, Ismael, like, can you just envision it real quick? Like, Absolutely. I would love to do the branded, like, segments and the game shows. I live but for we have game to flip, shows. You have to flip the gender because you'll be, you'll be Don Doña Francis. Francis. Doña, Fran Doña, Doña Loca. Francis. <laughs> Doña Loca. <laughs> and I'll oh be Ismael Estefan. This is so uh, fun. Let's put a pin in that because I want that to happen, but I also want to rewind on your career. Yeah. And they're going to tell me that I got to go soon. Um, no, but I wanted to say something very quick just to okay, round that up. Like, like. I've definitely manifested, like, in terms terms of manifesting I wanted to be uh, I want to be in Star Wars and I was and I wanted to play a boxer yeah and I wanted to play Ray a boxer Donovan. and I did and I, I wanted to play a, 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 like a, a military guy and I played I put a soldier uh, with Ang Lee so like there's all these things that I wanted to do that I've always been very clear about and with Lord of the Rings I the elves I was from Southern Monte Puerto Rico so ah. for me I, I, I had very similar values in terms of like nature and like what I loved and the trees and how they nurtured me and all those things, you know. There's nothing like the nurturing trees of El Caribe and the coqui. Yeah. And like the palmas oh. and the coco. I put I put like rain sounds and stuff like oh. that to sleep. I'm like, oh. Yeah. Every time I've been to PR, like the first night, I'm like, these freaking coquis. <laughs> but then like the second, third night, I get used to it. I'm like. Yeah, it'll be good. It's okay. Oh, I don't want lovely. one jumping in my mouth while I'm sleeping because I sleep with my mouth open. But like, you yeah. know, I want to I want to be surrounded by them. Okay, so manifesting. You also manifested like your whole college career. Like you put together. Okay, so I, I binged and I listened to a lot of your interviews because once I heard some nuggets of information, like, oh, I got to dig deeper. And like the journalist nerd came out. So you wanted to go to NYU. You gathered all your materials together. You were living in Puerto Rico at the time. You put it out there. You got in. You came to New York. Here I am recapping your life. But Please, I, go okay. for it. Better you than me. But I want to go <laughs> for like you becoming an actor and trying to, you know, um, you're faced with all these barriers. You had two bags of clothes that you came here with. Two laundry bags. <laughs> with duct tape. Sin maleta. <laughs> Sin maleta. I wonder if it was those red, white, and blue bags that everybody in the Caribbean loves. You know, they kind of look like straw, and you see them on the belt coming out, this and I'm like, that's my meshy. Thea's bag. Mine was meshy, like, oh. like a mesh bag, because <laughs> you could see all the content, so that I had to like reinforce it with duct tape, but it was hilarious. So you see that like everybody's luggage, like nice little luggage, and there's like these two bags, and, like, and I was like, because <laughs> <laughs> I was so happy, so naive, and so happy. So you get here, and then tell me what happens at that point. You Were you thinking big? 
what were you thinking stage? What, what were you thinking at that point? Well, I mean, I reverse engineered the thing um, when I was like 13, 14. I was at Puerto Rico in the mountains and I just, I just had this, this thing. I was like, oh, I'm gonna be in the movies. And, but I knew absolutely nothing how to get there. So I kind of reverse engineered how do I get there. And by the time that I was 15, I'd done some commercials, I'd done my first movie, I'd done a little TV in Puerto Rico, I became like ravenous. And like, there's a whole process of that, of course, we can talk about, but we're in a time constraint. Um, but it was a lot of hustling and knowing what I wanted to do and, and always driven by the fact that I wanted to give a voice to us, you know, oh, so to beautiful. people, to us. And that's, I think, the thing that has kept me uh, driven because this is very hard. It is very hard and it can be very lonely. It can be very challenging. It's exhausting in every way. You sacrifice so much. So if you're not connected to a, a purpose, a higher purpose, um, which for me has been our people, you know, I always think about our people um, when I step anywhere, and that really keeps me going. It's never been to be famous or anything like that. Actually, so being famous is like sometimes it's a bit hard. It is a bit hard, but um, you know, with being more visible comes uh, the influence of it all. You know, and mm -hmm. I've never taken that for granted. In fact, it was something that I was stepping into willingly to, you know. To, to be someone that we've never seen before because there was not a lot of that. And I've done a lot of firsts in that sense, you know. That's so great. And you have this torch and you're carrying it so elegantly. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and I'm sure people are drawing inspiration. You guys, Eloeleros, we have a lot of aspiring actors and writers and directors that listen to and watch the podcast. Shout out to you guys. This next question is for you also. What I also love and respect so much about your career trajectory is that you don't take no for an answer. I know that's a cliche term. We always think of it, you know what I mean? Um, when I'm like haggling with someone at a garage sale for like something that I think may be silver, I'm like, I'll give you $2 for it. I don't take no for an answer. This man also doesn't take no for an answer. And we know this because Lord of the Rings wasn't yours in the beginning. I mean, it was always mine. Oh, wait, let's rephrase. I, yeah. It was always mine, I knew that. Um, but there were some obstacles there. They yeah, were holding I mean, you back. There's a whole process to it. And like when you're casting, when people are looking for our characters, a thousand things that people are considering, um, which are none of my concern. <laughs> like I had, again, they have to do their thing and I do mine, which is um, believe and which is to fight for the thing, which is to show that um, I understand this character. And I was saying that this character understands me, you know, because there's a whole merging of those things. And yeah, I wasn't, I wasn't uh, the first, second, or third, and you know, I got, I think, three rejections by one point. Um, but yeah, no, I just, I, was, I knew that I had to go for it. And I do think you have to exhaust, like, all of your resources and do your best work. And if at that end it doesn't happen, you also don't experience regret. Yeah. You, you do go through the motions of, like, through the process of grieving a part, like, an, an, an opportunity. But you having the the knowledge that you did absolutely everything and without without shame because I've 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 written letters I've written a lot of letters that are very open and very vulnerable talking about my story with this stranger that I would like to work with sometimes it doesn't pan out but I'm not ashamed of being that vulnerable um, because I believe in, in I believe in what I want to do and and I believe in fighting for what you want to achieve and if that opportunity doesn't happen you just approach it super healthily and what you say they're lost yeah <laughs> you know? it's very inspiring just because yeah. how many times do we even as latinos trying to make it in our own respective fields and specifically in this business like the doors aren't always open for us. Mm -hmm. Like sometimes we have to, okay, everybody, one, two, three, bang! No. And we have to open it ourselves and kick in the door, mm -hmm. like Biggie. Um, I quote a lot of Biggie. I'm from Brooklyn. It's Do just, thing, okay. Thing. <laughs> um, it's funny because you just said everything that I envisioned you would say. You said something about this character that you know the soul of the character. Mm -hmm. When you feel that strong about something, there's nobody that could take it from you. No, like you have, the thing is that you have to have this passion and your heart has always uh, to be open. It always has to be open. And you always have to uh, run the risk of being heartbroken. And you have to do that over and over again. Like you can't approach anything like that with, without an open heart. 
and you have to refresh that commitment over and over and over again. Otherwise, the performance doesn't work. Mm. So you're looking for truth, just like a relationship. You can't approach a relationship looking for what happened before. And that's what happened to a lot of us. We go into relationships like judging based on what happened and we don't give this opportunity to this new person that is in front of us. Same thing with auditions like you have to, or roles. But auditions, you have to have very open, very vulnerable heart. But, um, but no, I mean, I'm just like, that's, you, feel, you feel so connected to the role and have this knowledge that is mine. And for the most part, or that I've been chosen by it, you know? And for the most part, that, that, that has always worked. Um, that's deep. Hector Campos was like that too, for yeah. Ray Donovan. Oh gosh, you boxing. Every time we were in the gym, it was just like you really brought us into that dirty, smelly. I could Sweaty. smell the armpits. Yeah. <laughs> and then, like those damp gloves. <laughs> was, yeah. that, was that fun to shoot? I mean, opposite Liv Schreiber. Like, whoa, yeah. that must have been so great. I mean, the word fun doesn't come to mind. Oh, snap. In the sense of uh, not because it was a bad experience, but. I had been couch surfing up until that point almost five years. Wow. So when that when that audition came, I was in a, in a bit of, not in a bit, it was quite in a rut, you know. I've been just like wow. uh, doing everything. And, and even like, I mean, I had done Sesame Street, I had done The Good Wife, I had done a few, like even the movie with Ang Lee, and I still, you know, because it was so sporadic and we really, you know, you really don't make that much. Uh, people think you're making millions, but it, it takes a while to make a like, little decent living. So I had to go back to the couch often. Wow. And in that couch, I was starting to feel like there's something gotta give, something's gotta give. And this character came about, and you know, it's a very dark character. It's like going through a lot. And when it fell in my lap, I was like, wow, I understand you, you know? And we oh had like gosh. that relationship. And I understood the character very well. And at the moment, I was much heavier than, than I needed to be for the role. Because also, I mean, I was super, I was depressed and I was eating a lot in the seasonal affective disorder that I'm pretty sure it happens to me. I it was winter, I, it was a lot going on. And when I went to do the audition, they were like, you know, that you would have to make a transformation. I was like, wow. drop me at the gym right now. Because they flew <laughs> me to LA and they're like, don't you have to go back and pack? I was like, I. You see that backpack? Let's go. That's all I need and that's all I have. <laughs> oh <laughs> like, my goodness. And I trained, I trained like crazy, wow. eight, nine hours a day. I had never wow. boxed before. Like, and it was so important to me that I, I could do it myself and that I did it properly. And I also knew that I, if this opportunity did not work for me, then I was gonna use that as a sign to pivot Mm -hmm. Even within our industry, I had a bunch of tabs open for, there's a program that I always wanted to do, it's the writing directing program at Columbia. Oh, so I was like cool. all open on my, my computer. Um, but then it actually hit. Like I gave it my all and that cast was stellar. Mm -hmm. And I did everything and it, and it was such a good introduction to like Hollywood essentially. So, um, I got to show a lot. You know? I'm sure you, I hope, you take some moments of time to like have a little bit of an outer body thought mm. or experience. I don't want to call it an experience, but like now you're starring in movies opposite Nicole Kidman. Mm. You're in heist movies with Eddie Murphy. He's one of my comedy heroes, you know, like of sketch. Wow. I mean, what are some words of advice that you have for a young Ismael who's listening or watching right now in Aguas, Puerto Rico, or in La República Dominicana, or in freaking Washington Heights, <laughs> or in Harlem, or Queens, or the Bronx, or even Staten Island. <laughs> <laughs> shade. It's so this much is shade. New York shade. It's for all the people that are watching outside of New York, that's loaded. <laughs> that is very loaded. $17 you guys, to cross a bridge. It's a lot get, of money, Don't Ismael. get roped in. <laughs> <laughs> don't participate if you come to New York. They always do this to you. Yes, And they do. start saying things like, oh, bridge and tunnel, and you don't know what it is, so you start repeating it. $17 this, to get into Staten Island. Give me a break. Then you my suddenly have a break. beef with Staten Island. You suddenly have a beef with Jersey, <laughs> and you're not even from here. <laughs> Like, and you don't even know people from there. And That's you're like, oh, yeah, Virgin Tunnel. Uh, yeah, you know? It's us. Like, do not participate. That's my advice. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. No, but for, but for real, I think um, 
Just going on what you were saying. Yeah, what are some like, words of advice that you have for that young Ismaelito? Que está escuchando. He needs some advice. Absolutely, he, he does. He may not feel that what you're doing is attainable or can come close. Or maybe he wants a career in aeronautics. Or maybe he wants to be a biologist. But the card that he's been handed is, no, you can't do this. Oof. It makes me emotional. Like, no, me emociona like, también. You keep saying that, I'm like, ooh, ooh, ooh. My, my eyes start, like, the tears start knocking. But it's just like, I don't it, have Kleenex, but you could use my sleeve. No, we're like, let those tears okay. run. If the tears come, uh, close up. <laughs> you guys hear that? We're I'll use it for my reel. I hope you have I'll the lenses. I'll use it for my reel. Maybe we'll get another Webby. <laughs> you know? Do you, can you imagine third time's a charm, just right? Like, Maybe we'll win it one day. But we're um, still nominated, and that feels good, too. This and you, one, Mr. This one, this one. Let's multi- manifest it. Oh, let's manifest it. And also, by the way, Mr. Multiple Critics' Choice Awards. I just have to throw that out there, too. So you know what it's like to not be defined by your award, but no. for it to give you more motivation, doesn't absolutely. it? Absolutely. No, absolutely. That's the thing. I mean, I'm trying to go over what you said also earlier. It's like, have I taken a moment? And oh, yeah. unfortunately, I hadn't for a long time. And it was, it's, but it's part of the drive. I just needed to go forward and continue and not settle. So in a way that's beautiful, right? That ambition and that drive, but it is necessary to take a moment and to account for uh, the things that you have achieved and to give yourself um, that love and that um, reassurance and learn how to give yourself a lot of reassurance because often you will be your only cheerleader. Mm. And the thing is that your dreams are going to always be misunderstood by absolutely everyone, even at different levels of misunderstanding. Even the people that believe in you won't know the largeness of your dreams because you're the ones having them. You have the context. So a lot of those opinions, you kind of have to, you know, take them with a grain of salt, like you say, and really... There is a thing, and it's as cliche as it sounds, but I knew it. I knew it. there's a little fire that if you quiet down a little bit, you can feel it mm. like in your heart. You know, you know um, when a thing is for you and what, that you, what you really want to do. And it's, uh, it's a thing that you, that fire that you have to kind of keep alive, even if it's like that pilot light. You know, because it doesn't happen. In me- yeah, you have to keep that pilot light up, you know. And and even if it doesn't happen in that moment, um, you have to keep checking in with it and don't let it die. Mm-hmm. Because, um, you again, you manifest things and you create a journey, but a lot of the times there's so many detours that are, are going to be equally as wonderful, you know. Um, and, and your career is going to do a thing that you never had an idea but you have to keep that essential aspect of it, like the belief in the fire, your values as well, your dignity. Because I remember when La Viejita, I was leaving Puerto Rico, and those La Viejita are like, mijo, don't, don't sell your soul. You know, and they're like, what the, what do you mean? You know, <laughs> like at that age, you're like, ay, Dios, si, claro, whatever. Then you get into this thing, and then you go to New York, and then you have all these, experiences a lot of which are quite difficult a lot of which i have not ever talked about you know mm-hmm. serious things that and not great people and people that don't have yeah. your best interest and you see me one day it's a book <laughs> we'll talk about it in the book a tour um love it but in that you do understand them what they meant you're like oh to not sell yourself yeah like don't don't lose yourself Stay also, there's, there's a dream and then there's also your values. And at the end of the day, I've made a, I made a commitment with myself that nothing will cost me my mental health. Mm. I come from being poor, so I know that I'll be fine. <laughs> you know, I also have a self-belief that even if I'm selling coconuts down the street, we'll make it work mm. and we'll be fine and I know how to scale down. But beautiful dreams, and you also have to, like the biggest, the biggest gift is life, and in life it is health. Yeah. And I think you also have to, little Ismael, you have to have a balance of that, of like um, what you want to go for, but also what you want to sacrifice. There's a lot of sacrifices that have to be made, and you have to be okay with those. But the balance, the balance, always check in with your non-negotiables, mm-hmm. you know? And, but also forgive yourself when you 
cross those boundaries because you cross them because we're not perfect because right. we're in situations in which we're navigating as I think Latinos um, and people of color in general and marginalized people continually have to navigate and a lot of the totally. times you're like I'm not being truthful or I'm code switching or or you know all these things and it's like unfortunately society is has not been shaped to accommodate us right so a lot of times you have to navigate and I'll, do what you gotta do modulate yeah you have to navigate and you have to modulate and you have to code switch and sometimes you have to like make certain decisions that later you're like Eek. Yeah. Um, and you forgive yourself for it, you yeah. know, because you are an uncharted territory. You are trying to make space for you in a place that there's no space. Mm -hmm. So if you've never made a chair, most likely the chair is going to be absolutely awful. But you keep trying, you know, and um, yeah, just say, let you ask for help. That's a good one. Ask for help. Um, yeah. Allow yourself to be helped. Let people know that you need them. I wrote many a letter, like I was saying, and I would tell people, you you come from where I come from, and you're always saying that you want us to achieve, so you got to help me mm. achieve, but be willing to put the work in, yeah. you know what I mean? Um, like, yeah, I mean, for me, it's like those things, keep the dream alive, keep yourself safe and healthy, but really just don't give up, don't ask for too many opinions. Because people, everybody has their fear, and um, and then things that the fears are like they incept themselves in you, and suddenly someone else's fear feels like your own. Yeah. And you don't, you're not able to track that it wasn't yours to begin with. Mm. But they kind of go in and go in, and you become this fearful person. And a lot of the times we hand our truth and our 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 dreams for people that are not ready to hold them, you know, and then they spoil them. And sometimes you don't have to share things with people. Sometimes right. you just go for it. You write that script, you 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 take that test, you send that letter, you do the drawing, you do the experiment, whatever it is. And you know, if you have mentors, be very selective about who you give your dreams to. Yeah. Yeah. I just, you must write that book, okay? Because I'm listening and this is like the audio book right now. Um, I want to also thank you for really carrying that torch and keeping it ignited. Mm -hmm. We hear from so many actors that are proud Latino actors, but then to hear that you're actually taking action and like preaching and evangelizing this message and mm -hmm. opening up the spaces. So open the spaces, because there's so many of us out there that are, we fit in those spaces. Mm -hmm. And to all those people that are telling us that we don't fit, like, just give us a try. You'll see, I promise you. It's like the perfect mold, you know, like, hey, Latina, like, it's just the perfect thing that will come out. Un subconscio delicioso. <laughs> um, Ismael, thank you so much for your time. Thanks for coming on to the Latinos Out Loud podcast. So be sure to catch Ismael Cruz Cordova on season two of Lord of the Rings, Rings of Power. It's out there now on Amazon Prime Video. We're so excited for you. Thank you so much for taking your time thank you, thank and you. being on Latinos Out Loud. And you are such a Latino out loud. Oh my gosh. Yeah, I mean. <laughs> You're living the purpose. Like, I love that. Desde Puerto Rico para el mundo entero. Hueva.